In this part, we want to take a closer look at a completely different all-wheel drive system, which will also carry the name Quattro. The Haldex system for transversal drivetrains. Ferdinand Piech was a huge fan of the platform strategy. So you develop one platform and create many different cars from it. So you can offer the customer a huge variety of cars at low development costs, because underneath they are all the same. In 1993, he became VW CEO, and when Audi decided to expand downwards, so to bring a new smaller Audi model, it was clear that it would be based on VW's Golf. Until then, every Audi could be ordered with Quattro all-wheel drive, and it should be no difference with the new Audi A3. And the solution was already in their drawer. After Audi successfully introduced the Quattro all-wheel drive system to the world in 1980, VW presented the Passat Tetra in 1983. They produced the first mass-production all-wheel drive car in 1984 and changed the name, which sounded like a juice box, the VW T3 Synchro. We will take a closer look at the exact history of VW's Synchro system in a separate video, but for the T3, VW used a viscous coupling. This is basically a housing filled with oil and plates connected to a shaft at each end, rotating inside. If there is a huge speed difference between the plates, the shear forces inside will try to equalize both speeds, so it basically works like a torque converter, just with straight plates instead of shovels. VW first used it for their T3 and shortly after for the Golf. The good thing about the system is that the front rear drive stays the same. A prop shaft is connected directly to the front differential and links to the rear axle. At the rear diff sits the viscous coupling. So the car works exactly the same as the front wheel drive version. But if the front wheels are spinning on a slippery slope, there is a big speed difference within the viscous coupling and it will transmit torque to the rear axle. That way, you don't need a mid differential. The car has all wheel drive and it's relatively cheap and simple to realize. For the Golf Mark IV, VW was introducing a new technology, an electronic clutch from the Swedish company Haldex. So now, instead of the passive viscous coupling, there was an active clutch which could be controlled electronically. Previously, the viscous coupling always had certain losses because there was always a slight speed difference between both sides, so the rear axle always got less torque than the front. Advantage with the Haldex system was now that the electronic clutch could couple both sides together if needed, so no speed differences were possible. It had a much quicker reaction time, it could open and close whenever the car wants it, and that allowed better driving dynamics and better use of ABS and ESP at the same time. So this system was planned for the new Golf Mark IV, and since the Audi A3 was on the same PQ34 platform, it had the same system. And since it's Audi, it was called Quattro. It was offered for the more powerful versions of the A3 and S3, and shortly after the TT followed on the same platform, with the same system. So although it is called Quattro, it is a very different system. The car always stays a front-wheel drive car, but can connect the rear axle if needed. But it cannot reduce torque on the front axle and shift it to the back like the original Quattro system for longitudinal engines. So the front rear drive driving behavior stays. The system has no mechanical diff locks, but an electronic function through the ABS system. So this simple system allows smaller cars with transversal engines to have an all wheel drive system, which can be fine tuned electronically. And Audi could use the VW platform and still put a Quattro badge on their A3 and TT. I hope you liked this episode and please consider to become a B-Sport club member for early access and more videos like this. See you at the next Quattro history video.